Whew, it's the morning. What's up, beer geeks? I'm drinking coffee. It's a, well, it's not early, but it's, it's early for a bar. Oh, oh, let me just, let me just. I'm here at Old Devil Moon. First time I've shot any video here. This is my bar in San Francisco, and I've just got something really cool and exciting to uh, talk about today. It's the future of yeast and of the beer industry, I think. You know, I've been very excited about Kvike. I've done a bunch of videos on that. During a panel discussion with the owner of Almanac Beer Company and Omega Yeast Labs uh, a few weeks ago, the final question was, if you guys are back here in a couple of years, what are you talking about? It took me a millisecond to just say genetic engineering. I mean, that is what's happening. That is going to be potentially revolutionary for the beer industry in a way that I think Kvike is too, because I think people using CRISPR can take those genes out of Kvike that allow it to ferment so hot and fast and put it into other brewers. I mean, this is, this is the kind of stuff that's gonna happen. We've got a very cool company in, uh, just across the bay from San Francisco in Berkeley called Berkeley Brewing Science. And they just worked with a local brewery, a great little brewery called Laughing Monk here in San Francisco. They make lots of great beer. We pour it here at Old Devil Moon. What they've done here is they've brewed the, the same exact beer. Well, it's, it's split, split the batch. It's a pale ale, pretty typical. Um, Simcoe, Eureka, and this one is called Control. This one is called Science. The only difference between them is that science was fermented with a yeast strain from Berkeley Brewing Science called High Sierra. And to make that yeast strain, what they did was they took genetic information from mint plants and from basil plants and put it into a Saccharomyces cerevisiae strain, uh, probably Chico, to create High Sierra. And the point is, to bring new flavors to beer and potentially to save brewers money on hops because if the yeast that's fermenting the beer creates flavors that are what you would get from hops then you know you don't have to buy as much as many hops which you know is bad news for hop farmers obviously but I'm like being judgment free here about the the genetic modification issues I just think this is super cool there's lots of debate out there about this stuff but this is really neat. And I haven't tried these yet. I'm super excited to try them. So let's compare. I mean, this is so rare that a brewery does this, right? This is something home brewers do all the time. Split a batch, ferment them with different yeast or dry hop them with different hops, see what the difference is. And breweries obviously do this, especially for internal comparison, but it's rare that they tell you about it and then sell it to you, right? As, the pub, as you know, members of the public. So this is super cool. So, so here we have Control, which is a pale ale. I'm gonna guess it's fermented with either Chico or Vermont. And by the way, I mean, you can just see, color is the, pretty much exactly the same. There's a touch of haze, getting some like apricot stone fruit, some kind of melon, a little bit of dankness, kind of your typical American hop dankness. Oh, that's a, that's a summer crusher right there. I just got back from a camping trip kind of near Yosemite. And while I was out there, I went to a bunch of swimming holes and I drank a whole bunch of little hazy thing from Sierra Nevada. This actually reminds me of those, of the flavors in that. I would have happily taken a bunch of cans of that out there. I'll tell you what, having a beard can be annoying. All right, let's check out science. The clarity is pretty darn good. Oh, wow. All right, immediately, it is just, it is more herbaceous. I was actually expecting something to be more like analog of hop, hop aromas, but actually what I'm getting is, it is minty and that's like possibly just a suggestible, you know, I know that they put mint and basil genes in here, right? So in that yeast, there's suggestibility there, but this really, what I really get is, is bay leaf, just bay leaf. I mean, not just bay leaf. I'm not saying it's not complex, but that is what jumps right out. 
I think of Bayleaf actually as quite minty in character. It is really, truly just more herbaceous and not in a, not in like an offensive way. It's not over the top. It's actually, it's more than just subtle, but it's not too much. It's, it's obvious, but it's, it's really pleasant. Like if someone handed me these two beers and just said, yeah, we like dry bay leafed this one. I'd be like, cool. I totally taste it. Mm. That's a damn good beer. The food pairing possibilities for that. I would love to do some food pairing with this beer. I'm not sure I get basil, right? But that's not the point. The point is to add new flavors. In this case, herbaceous flavors that maybe replicate some hop character. Maybe, you know, not exactly i think that's what's going on with these companies is they are you know like berkeley brewing science and definitely there are others out there doing it they're using crispr they're creating all these new yeast strains they're fermenting with them to see what happens it's just so exciting and wild genetically modified yeast strains here's the ultimate genetically modified yeast strain I mean, this is what today's ultimate yeast would be. A fike-like strain in terms of how hot it can ferment and how fast without producing off flavors, but it just is totally tropical in a way that replicates hops that are expensive and hard to get, right? That would be the ultimate genetically modified yeast strain for this moment. But there's so much that can be done, right? I mean, that's what I can think of right now as, as what would like dominate the market. But the reality is through doing this work, they might create yeast that actually opens the doors to whole new styles of beer. I mean, that's possible, right? Who knows? Who knows what we'll end up with? Anyway, this is super exciting. I think Old Devil Moon is one of the first probably in the world to offer. This is actually the second beer we've had on draft that, that was fermented with genetically modified yeast. The other one was a yeast that had genetic information from melons in it. And that one was made by Almanac. Really interesting stuff, you know? It's so early in this game, but it's happening. So if you get the opportunity, I would highly recommend you give this a try. I mean, I know it, yeah, it's kind of weird. I'm not scared about it personally, but I think there's still a lot there's a lot to learn about this stuff. If you see it on a menu, you gotta give it a shot because it's really interesting. Mm, super good. Nice work, Laughing Monk. Nice work, Berkeley Brewing Science. Thanks for hanging out with me, y'all. This was a fun one. All right, cheers. <laughs>